What's happening, hardscapers? Today, we're going to be talking about jointing compounds for interlocking concrete pavement, which ones you have available for options for your project, as well as the pros and cons and applications of each of them. Let's get into it. So when it comes to the jointing compound of interlocking concrete pavement, we've got a few options to weigh in order to decide which one is best for your application, whether it's permeable, impermeable, or whatever it might be, there are options that you can choose from for your project. Now, jointing compound plays an important role in the interlocking concrete pavement system. It helps with the vertical interlock of the system to displace the load that it experiences on the surface by transferring the shear force from one paver unit to the next so it's incredibly important to the interlocking concrete pavement so not only is the installation process extremely important to the system also is the choice that you should make for your system and with that there are a few options that you can choose from depending on what you want to do with your project the traditional method was to use a jointing sand and this is a sand that's graded very differently from a concrete sand or an ASTM C33 sand, which you would see with more sub-angular particles, grains, in the sand. With a jointing sand, you see more so an angular granule in the sand. This prevents washout. However, this is the problem with installing a jointing sand. You do experience washout. You do experience weed growth, insects, whatever it might be, because it is loose. It is swept in there loosely and it is not activated or solidified, cured, whatever it might be, like we'll see with other products on the market for jointing compounds. This is the problem with jointing sand. The positive part of jointing sand is that it's extremely cheap when compared to other jointing compounds that are currently on the market. Now, one thing that you can do to prevent this, to prevent the washout, the weed growth of jointing sand would be to apply a joint stabilizing sealer to the surface of your pavement. This will in fact lock in your jointing sand and prevent those insects and weed growth in the future as well as that washout. So this is an option that you can go for if you are deciding to go for a jointing sand. Especially if you do plan on sealing your paver project, this could be an option for you for your jointing compound. This is installed like you would a polymeric sand or another jointing compound where it's swept into the joint. It's consolidated with a compactor on the surface with some sort of protective pad to prevent the scuffing of the pavers as you roll your paver plate compactor on the surface to consolidate that down to the bottom and then more is swept in to be able to get to that eighth of an inch below the top of the paver or bottom of the chamfer. Polymeric sand would be the next option that we're going to talk about and this was developed in the early 2000s and it's come a very long way in its technology and the way that it is activated as this it has polymers in it where with water they are activated and this sand cures to solidify in that paver joint. This helps to prevent or impede the growth of weeds or insects coming into it. And this does not 100% prevent it, but it definitely does help because weeds will ultimately grow anywhere from the top down if given a chance. Polymeric sand does not let a lot of water through the joint. We're talking somewhere between 2% and 5% penetration of water through the joint when polymeric is installed properly. The installation process is the same as jointing sand where it's swept in, consolidated, and then swept in again to get to that level of one eighth of an inch below the top of the paver or bottom of the chamfer. And then it is activated with water and this is gonna differ depending on the manufacturer. So you need to check with the manufacturer or read the instructions carefully on how to activate this, especially with leaf blowing the surface to get any dust off before you go ahead and activate it. This is typically anywhere from four to five times the cost of jointing sand. So it's getting a little bit more expensive on the range of jointing compounds. And if not installed properly, which can happen, especially with the watering phase, 
especially with the consolidation phase and especially if you're using stone dust as a bedding layer or even as your base material, which you should not, this will cause the failure of that polymeric sand. And this can be a very expensive failure to have when you're talking about three to four times the cost of jointing sand. However, polymeric sand has been embraced by the industry over the 20 years that it's been in existence. So it's come a long way in its technology and we see more and more advancements with polymeric sand with manufacturers offering upwards of 15 to 20 year warranties on their product if installed properly. So ultimately for the majority of our projects in my business, we're gonna opt for polymeric sand. But if you want an option that allows water to flow through it, there are now resin-based jointing compounds that allow water to flow through them and they are semi-permeable options. These are easy to install and do not experience similar failures to that of polymeric sand. Simply wet the surface, pour the jointing compound onto the surface, immediately wet it with water and sweep it around the job site. Now with polymeric sand, you should not have any water introduced to it on the surface or in the joints of the pavers before sweeping it into. It should be completely dry, especially for about 24 hours afterwards as well. But with these resin-based jointing compounds, and there's a few manufacturers on the market that manufacture this jointing compound, you can install it in the rain and it is actually installed with water. So this is the consolidation process where the water will actually suck that jointing compound down to the bottom of the joint. Now with this, it does take about two to three times longer to install than polymeric sand, and it actually costs about two to three times more than polymeric sand. So substantially more than jointing sand and definitely more than polymeric sand. So if you're opting for a semi-permeable jointing compound, you definitely need to quote that into the project. It's not something that you decide that if it's raining on this day and you are going to install polymeric sand that you just decide to go with this resin-based jointing compound. It's definitely more expensive and it costs more in labor to install. However, this works really well in projects that you're going to use a synthetic base in or in projects that you are going to be installing an open graded base, such as a raised patio. This has worked really well for me in the past. And though I have heard people installing their raised patios level with this jointing compound to allow that water to go through and to give them a level surface for their raised patio, I do not necessarily recommend it. I have done it with one project that has held up really well in the past, but with paver projects, you always want a one eighth of an inch to one quarter of an inch per foot slope on your project to allow that water to get away from foundations. And at the very least, you need your subgrade to be pitched away from these foundations. So any water that makes its way through, especially in an open graded base system or a synthetic base system, that that water is going to make its way all the way down to that subgrade and sheet away from any foundation. Your subgrade should mimic the surface of your pavement. Now, one application where I would not use this semi-permeable jointing compound would be a traditional base with a gravel and then with a concrete sand on top of that. I would opt for a polymeric sand in that situation. Which brings us to a permeable application where you want water to go right through that joint all the way down through that base material. And in this option, you would use an angular crushed clean stone that has been washed of fines. These are typically sold in bags by similar manufacturers of jointing compounds. And ultimately this is just swept into the joints and consolidated as well with any jointing compound. Now with permeable solutions, whether that's a resin based jointing compound or this chip that you are going to install into the joints. This does involve some cleaning as these joints get clogged up if you want to keep that permeability. So in the case of the resin based jointing compound, you can actually pressure wash it and it stays in place. However, with these jointing chips, when a joint stabilizing sealer is not applied to them, it gets a little bit more difficult to maintain this as there will be particles that work its way into it, whether that be dirt, pollen, whatever it might be over the years, and these will need to be maintained. That typically means scraping out the joints and possibly reinstalling a chip into the joints after a few years or so. But that really depends on the environment around, whether there's trees overhead or not. So that timeline is going to change, but it does need to be discussed with your client if they are wanting a fully permeable system installed. These are your choices for joint
anointing compounds currently on the market. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. What do you think of these options? What do you use in your business? Leave any questions or comments in the comments section. I will respond to anybody and everybody. If you want more information on these jointed compounds, there's a link in the description below to an article on this that we have written at howtohardscape.com. And if you wanna learn more about hardscaping in general, we have a members only platform with courses, content, and so much more about hardscape installation features and even running your hardscaping business. So the link is also going to be in the description. Like this video if you found it at all helpful for any reason whatsoever. That really helps me and this channel to bring you more hardscaping content. And be sure to subscribe to this channel for more hardscaping content and ring that notification bell so you know when we release the next video. Thank you so much for watching.